فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى هي سد كرام برره نوبل اند بيوتيفول الله سبحانه وتعالى هي سبوك اباوت ذا انجلز as though they are noble which they are these are their characteristics and they are also beautiful they are of high level in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions in another ayah la ya'asuna Allah ma amarahum they do not disobey Allah in that which he commands them wa yaf'aluna and they do ma yu'maruna what they are commanded the angels they don't disobey Allah they obey him in every single thing which he commands them and they also follow his command walidhalika ibn kathir rahimahullah on the commentary of that verse he said something very powerful something a talib ilm especially a person who learned the quran should place ala nusbu aynayhi should place it right in front of him and that is he said ومن هنا ينبغي لحامل القران ابن كثير said and this is upon every person who's carrying the quran who's memorized the quran who's got the quran with him ان يكون في افعاله that he is in his actions واقواله and in his speech على السداد والرشاد that he is upon guidance and he is upon the path that is required from him the reason is because these angels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what did they make what did Allah make them we mentioned this previously they are safara meaning they are ambassadors they are conveyors on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the revelation has been given to them and we know and inshallah ta'ala we're going to be taking in more details of surah al-an'am that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is which angel did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it his job to convey the wahi the revelation whose job was it jibril does jibril come by himself No, he comes with other angels that are with him. Jibril is not by himself when he comes. He's got other angels that are with him. We're going to take that in Surah Al-An'am bi idnillahi al-karim. So those angels that are carrying the Quran, Allah what did he refer to them as? Kiramin barara. So the person who's carrying the Quran, who the Quran has been given to him like that, he should have that characteristics, obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is a true slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah then says قُتِلَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا أَكْفَرَهُ قُتِلَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا أَكْفَرَهُ Cursed is man. How disbelieving is he? Allah says, قُتِلَ الْإِنسَانُ What does the word قُتِلَ الْإِنسَانُ mean? It means لُعِلَ الْإِنسَانُ لُعِلَ قُتِلَ means لُعِلَ وَلِذَلِكَ مُجَاهِدِ بْنُ جَبْرٍ The great Imam مُجَاهِدِ بْنُ جَبْرٍ He's the student of who? Ibn Abbas. He's the man who sat with Ibn Abbas. He said, عَرَضْتُ الْمُصْحَفَ عَلَى Ibn Abbas. He said, I opened the Mus'haf in front of Ibn Abbas. ثَلَاثُ عَرَضَاتِ Three times. From beginning to ending. أُقِفُ عِنْدَ كُلِّ آيَةِ Every ayah I ask Ibn Abbas, what does this mean? What does this ayah mean? What does this ayah mean? Three times from the beginning to the end. Beginning to the end. Beginning to the end. The whole entire Quran, I asked him three times, beginning to end. Mujahid, right? So what has he got? It's for ilm. That's why Sufyan al-Thawri said, إِذَا جَاءَكَ تَفْسِيرُ مُجَاهِدْ فَحَسْبُكَ بِهِ If the tafsir of Mujahid comes to you, it's enough. Don't ask for more. The tafsir of Mujahid, if it comes to you, فَحَسْبُكَ بِهِ It's enough for you of what Mujahid says. Are you with me? Mujahid said that من طريق سليمان الأعمش narrated from him ما كان في القرآن wherever you find in the Quran the word الإنسان is being used like this one Allah has done this to the human Allah has قتل الإنسان أو فعل بالإنسان أو 
This has been done to mankind. If you ever see Allah saying, cursed is mankind, or Allah saying, this has been done to mankind, or the wrath of Allah be upon mankind. If you hear that word, mankind, al-insan, Mujahid said, remember that it's not meant by all of mankind. It's specifically meant by who? The kuffar. It's meant by who? The kuffar. This is a qaida then. It's a principle. What's this called again? Al-Kuliyat. It's a comprehensive principle you memorize. That's what he said. وَلِذَلِكْ أَطَّاهِرِ بْنُ عَاشُورِ The great Imam, the great Mufassir, he took that Mujahid statement and he said الْغَالِبُ فِي إِطْرَاقِ لَفْضِ الْإِنسَانِ فِي الْقُرْآنِ النَّازِلِ بِمَكَّةِ The majority of the times when the word Al-Insan is used in a surah, that's a Meccan surah. So if the word Al-Insan is used in a Meccan surah, majority of the times he said it means the kuffar. Such as when Allah said, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ That verily mankind layatra He transgresses and he exceeds his limits. Or what Allah says, أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَنْ يُتْرَكَ سُدَى Does he believe mankind that he would be left without no aim or purpose behind him? Or when Allah said, أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَلَّا النَّجْمَعَ عِظَامَ Does mankind believe that we will not bring his bones together and bring him back to life? So this word, mankind, 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 that's been used in these verses. What did Tahir ibn Ashur say? All of these verses are Meccan. It means what? Kuffar of Quraysh. The Kuffar specifically. So here when we say, Qutila al-insanu, cursed is man, you put in brackets the disbelievers. Ma akfara. How disbelieving is he? The word here that's been used, Allah says, Qutila al-insanu, Ma akfara. Ma akfara. Allah used the word ma. The scholars, they differ by what's meant by the word ma. What's meant by it? One view of the Mufassirin, they said that the ma here that be, this, that's been used is a ma which is istifhamiyah. It's a question. Why are they disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What's, ta what's making them disbelieve in Allah? It's a question. It's a istifhamil question. Another view of scholars is that it is not istifhamiyah, that it is what? A ta'jubiyah. Ah, it's ta'jubiyah, meaning fascinating and amazing is that mankind disbelieves. How, why would he disbelieve for? This why, uh, this is min babi ta'jub, amazement. What gives him the right to be disbelieving? When everything has been given to him and he's been nurtured and he's been taken care of and everything has been done for him and he's been brought into this world by Allah. Why is he disbelieving? This is Mbabi Ta'ajjub. And that second opinion, which is that it is Ta'ajjubiya, is more stronger. Is more stronger. Especially the fact that that has an ablagu. It is more stronger in terms of uslub, in terms of uh, speech. But again, this is not a khilaf, which is that the two views can't be brought together. It's a khilaf which is tanawu. It's a khilaf that both of them can work together. And the reason why is because the word ma is ishtirak lughawi. The word ma can use one, any of those meanings. It can take any of those meanings and nothing is re refusing it from each one. But what's more stronger is to use it as ta'jubiyya. Qutila al-insanu. Cast is mankind. Ma akfara. Ma akfara. How disbelieving is he? Allah then says, Min ayyi shay'in khalaqahu. From what substance did he create him? Allah says, Min ayyi shay'in From what substance did he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, create him from? This now is a question. And this uh, istifham here, this questioning, is ala sabili taqreer, a matter is being affirmed here. Sometimes a question might be asked in the Qur'an, but the Qur'an is not waiting for you to give the answer. No, it's not. The Qur'an, the question itself holds the answer. This is called in Arabic, istifham ala sabili taqreer. It's called questioning with the answer inside the question. And that is, in this, in this particular situation is, مِنْ أَيِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقَهُ What is the original thing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him? So he can become sufficed from iman or believing in his Lord and give precedence to disbelief. In other words, what is he made of that makes him feel sufficient and not in need of believing in his Lord. The answer here is already in the question, which is, 
is made from something that makes him in need of his Lord. So why is he disbelieving in his Lord? Why is he disbelieving in his Lord? Every one of us is in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fact that you need Allah, if one split second you were told you're not going to breathe, or you were told to pay for every single time that you breathe, many of us will not live. And those who did live for a while would only live because they would have to find money that they would have to rob from others to live. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you everything that you have. And look, Allah gave you all of that not because he knows Allah gave you all of that and when he gave it to you humans give you things they sometimes say I gave you this but when they do give it to you they give it with a motive behind, behind it which is that they might get something from you in return or even better or they might get some respect from you or, 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 or. Allah gives it to some who don't ever obey him who disobey him, who never come, and what he gives you is far greater than whatever response you come with, whatever good you come with, is never equivalent to what he gave you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just before I came uh, to the tafsir class today, I was yesterday, last night, yesterday, I was watching a video, and then I went, there was a recommended video, and the recommended video on YouTube, I pressed it. It was a man who lost his ear. And so they were making a, a prostate ear. They were making an ear for him. And subhanAllah, the process in how they were making it, the way they had to shape his ear, the way they had, they had to carve it, then they had to color it in, and then they had to put it into an oven, and then come, and then shape it again, and then compare it to his complexion. All of that, Allah did it with what? Kun? Fayakun. And then once it was done, and then once it was put on his ear, and then it was shown, there was still so much deficiency in it. The two ears were not the same. You could see there's a difference. And again, his hearing is still weaker on the one that they gave him. Ya yeah, akhi, oh, it really made me realize the ni'am Allah has given us, the blessings of Allah is far great. If a person came up to you today and said to you, this one finger that you have, I'll give you 100,000 for it. Would you give it to me? No. 200, 300, 400, a million, two million, three million. Just your finger, you would say no. A billion, you would say no. So you believe that your finger is worth more than a billion? No, to you it's worth more than that. Who gave you this for no price with it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the one who gave you all of this, and the one who made you, even once he's given it to you, that this body still needs him. It's not like once he gave it to you, you're not in need of him. This will not work lahza, split second, without his permission. It won't work. So you're still in need of him, even that though he's given it to you. So that slave that is in need of him like that, what makes him think that he shouldn't be in obedience to his Lord and believe in his Lord? That's what Allah is asking us here. What is the asal that Allah created this person? That he feels to himself that he sufficed in believing in his Lord and that he should come with disbelief. What is it that's in him? Now Allah is going to tell us what he made you from. And then now you're going to know your weight, your worth, and what you really are from. If you walk on this earth thinking you're arrogant, and that you're everything, huh? and that your voice and your statement has to be taken into consideration, and you need to get respect, then listen what you originally made from. Allah says, From a sperm drop, Allah says, He created him, and He destined for him, mankind. Min nutfatin. Allah created you from a sperm drop. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the aslul insan, the original source that a human being comes from. And your mansha, it's originally where you're from. Ma'in, qalilin, water. That's little. That the person doesn't want it to be in him. That's what you're from. And then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destine? He destined for you to go through procedures. He destined for you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to go through levels and stages. In your mother, you go through phases. This happens, and then this happens, and then your body parts come out, and then this happens, and then he done it all. He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he destined for you stages. Then you come out of the womb of your mother, and you come into this world, and then what? You're lying down on your back. You don't sleep on your two sides. 
You only live on your mother's milk. You don't eat food. And then you start to eat, drink, take, taking a bit of powder. And then after that, you start eating soft food. And then you start walking, you, you start moving on your knees and your, uh, your hands. And then, and then you start crawling. And then you start walking. And then you start running. And then you go back to what you were before. You get older. You sit down. You go on a wheelchair. And that's what your cycle is. He destined all of that for you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's the one who put you through it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Min nutfatin khalaqahu. Allah says, I created you from a sperm drop and destined for you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars, the mufassirin, what is meant by faqaddara? I only told you one view of what the scholars say. One view is, of course, the stages that the person goes through. Nutfa, and then alaqa, and then the person's bones come, and then etc. And then when the person grows, and then the person gets older. That's one. Another view says, فَقَدَّرَهُ It means that Allah destined for you your provision, what you're going to eat. He also destined for you whether you're going to be from the people of Jannah, or whether you're going to be from the people of the hellfire. They said this is what's meant by it. But what we will say is the ayah is am, the ayah is general, and it means all of that. Because the famous hadith is in the person does go through those stages, and also when the angel comes. He also writes down the stages that you're going to go through and he also writes your provision. And he also writes where you're going to finally go. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, ثُمَّ Then he eased the way for him. ثُمَّ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has made for you the path easy. Ah. The Mufassirin, the Salaf the Ummah, the scholars of Tafsir, they asked themselves, they said, what is meant by as sabil the way? What way is what, what's the, what way does the ayah mean? Thumma sabila yassara. He eased the way for us. What ways is it that he eased for us? They took two opinions. They took two opinions of what is meant by the word as sabil The first is, the coming out of tariqu khuruji min batni ummihi coming out of the womb of your mother Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he made it easy subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the view of who this is the view of Abdullah ibn Abbas Abi Salih Suddi Qatada Sa'id ibn Jubayr and this view is more in line of the context because what was just mentioned is min nutfa Sperm drop was mentioned. Then to Sabila, it's more befitting that it's talking about coming out of the womb of your mother. But the second view is to Sabila yassara, that the word as-sabil here means tariqul haqqi wal batin. Allah, He made easy the path to the truth. He made it easy, subhanahu wa ta'ala. To Sabila yassara, Allah made the truth easy. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the ayah that they use for that is Inna hadaynahu sabila imma shakiran wa imma kafura. That Allah says, Inna hadaynahu, we guided mankind on the path. Imma shakiran, some of them have gratitude and some of them are disbelievers. This view is attributed to Mujahid, Ibn Jabrin, Hassan al Basri, and Ibn Zayd. That they said, here it means the true path. Now some may ask, if the true path, Allah has made it easy, then why is it that we find a group of people who are, who are diverted from that path? If the path is clear and Allah has made it easy, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars, they mention there are three things. There are three things that get in the way of the person following that path. And the person submitting to that path. And that is al-jahl, ignorance. And the second is 
الظلم which is exceeding your limits and oppression and last but not least is سوء القصد when the person has a bad motive and a bad intention these three are the three main reasons why a person will go against the truth and will follow a deviated path whether it be deviation in the religion or even if it's deviation in worldly matters a person would fall short in following the truth because of one of these three and as we all know the truth that Allah has guided us with is the fitrah the asal is the fitrah brothers and sisters the fitrah has two components that are very strong the first one is mahabbatul haqqi wa iradati the haqq is very beloved to the fitrah Allah has placed in us something called the fitrah which is the natural disposition the truth is very beloved to us and it's something our body and our minds and our soul yearns for we love it we desire it we want it when the person sins have you not seen it they feel uncomfortable that's why they cry they become emotional that's why the prophet said well evil doing is when you feel uncomfortable and you don't like to see people seeing you do it and the second thing that the fitrah has is recognizing the truth from the falsehood recognizing the truth and the falsehood is an innate ability Allah has placed inside us when you see the truth it will go hand in hand with your fitrah it will be your body will accept it and your mind will accept it وَلِذَلِكَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنُ السَّلَامِ The Jew man, what did he do? When he came to the city of Medina and he heard that the Prophet came to Medina and the people all ran to the Prophet Abdullah ibn Salam said وَكُنْتُ فِي مَنْ جَفَلَ I was from those people who ran to the Prophet and when I came to him I looked at his face and I realized it's the face this face is not the face of a liar How did he realize that? How did he recognize that Nabi Allah Muhammad is not a liar? Because of the fitrah. That's why Mu'ad said to the man, follow the truth even if it comes from a dim-witted person. Even if a dim-witted individual speaks the truth, take it from him. Because it's your lost property. If you, lost, if you found your, your, your iPhone X in a rubbish, in a bin, would you say, oh, because it's in the bin, I'm not going to take it. It's yours. It's your lost property. You'll take it. you say, oh. And you put it in your pocket, right? The truth is your lost property like that. Wherever you find it, you take it. It was mine in the first place, I got it back. So, Mu'ad said to the man, follow the truth even if you hear it from a dim-witted one. Then the man said to Mu'ad, how would I know that what he spoke is the truth? He's a dim-witted man. I wouldn't know what he says that is right. He says, Inna The truth has a light. Don't worry, your body will recognize it. And your body will take it in, no problem. There is a light that shines from the truth that the mind and your body and your soul will accept. That's what it is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided mankind. And then guess what? Allah brought with that fitrah, He brought the revelation to support it. Just sometimes what can happen is the fitrah can get tainted as, over, as time goes on. And it gets tainted. It's like a glass. It gets tainted. The Qur'an comes and it cleans it, and it cleanses it, and the revelation cleans it, and supports the fitrah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so those two meanings, the ayah can take, the ayah, uh, thumma sabila yassara, the word sabil can take one of those meanings. Any of those two meanings, it can take. It can take any of those two meanings. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, thumma amatahu fa then he causes his death and provides a grave for him. Allah here tells us, once he has guided you, once he's brought you out of the womb of your mother, once he's brought you into this earth, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he causes you to die. And then what does he cause you to go through? He causes you to go into a grave by yourself. This is a cycle that has been happening ever since Allah created mankind. This cycle will not change because you don't want it. It's a cycle you will go through. So Allah says to us, Thumma amatahu, Then mankind will come to an end. He will die. 
Allah has destined for him death after him living in this world. After he took his time in this world, he will come to a time where he's going to die. And then what's going to happen is, he's going to be hastened to his grave and he's going to be buried there. That's where he's going to go. ثُمَّ And then he's, then he is caused, his death is, his, uh, his, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes him death. فَأَقْبَرَهُ And then provides a grave for him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person goes into that deep grave by himself. There's nobody with him. Alone. After having lived in the womb of his mother alone, he goes back to that loneliness again. He goes back to the loneliness again by himself, asked question by angels. And these angels, the answer that slave gives is all going to be in accordance to how his uprightness and his steadfastness was whilst he was living in this world. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, ثُمَّ إِذَا شَاءَ أَنْشَرَهُ Then when he wills, when he subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, when he wills, he will resurrect him. ثُمَّ إِذَا شَاءَ When Allah wills, أَنْشَرَهُ He will resurrect him. This is all in accordance to what Allah wants. When Allah thinks it's the time for him to get out of his grave and to walk out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him to come out. And he will tell him to come out of his grave. So the person, he came from a min nutfatin khalaqahu a sperm drop. And then the person went through a destined period of cycles. And then after that, he came out of the womb of his mother. And then after that, he died. And then after that, he got taken to his grave. And then he got resurrected. ثُمَّ إِذَا شَاءَ أَنْشَرَهُ After he had died, this person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he wills and he wants, he will bring him out of his grave. This would be when? This would be the day when the trumpet is blown. This is when? This is going to be when the trumpet is blown. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, كَلَّا لَمَّا يَقْضِ مَا أَمَرَهُ No, man has not yet accomplished what he was commanded to come with. Allah says, Kalla, No, not at all. Has human fully accomplished and has come with what he was commanded to do. You as an individual should not think to yourself that you have fully come with everything that you were told to come with. ولذلك Mujahid said, لا يقضي أحد أبدا مفترض عليه No one on the face of this earth is going to fully come with of every obligatory thing that was obliged on him. Mujahid says, لا يقضي أحد no one will fully come with أَبَدًا whatsoever مَفْتُرِضَ عَلَيْهِ That which has been made obligatory on him. No one will. Every one of us is going to come deficient. We're going to come deficient. We're going to come be missing some of the wajibat. We won't be able to come to come with it. So if we take that statement of Mujahid, which is لا يقضي أحد أبدا مفترض عليه Then Mujahid believes that this ayah كلا لما يقضي ما أمر is not only talking to the disbelievers. It's actually talking to who? It is also talking to the believers. That the disbelievers, of course they haven't accomplished what they were commanded to do. Even the believers haven't. According to Mujahid, the believer has not fully accomplished what he was told to accomplish. He hasn't. لم يؤدي أوامر الله التي أنزلها على رسوله. He has not fully accomplished and he has fully come with the command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent his way through the tongue of our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the view that Mujahid has taken is the tafsir which is sahih. It's the correct opinion. Because the qa'idah according to the scholars is al-ibrata bi'umum al-lafz la bi-khusus al-sabab. Even that though it came down on the disbelievers, as the wording that the ayah is talking to the disbelievers, but it shouldn't be restricted to the disbelievers. It also surpasses them and it also means the believers as well. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ Let mankind look at, let him look at إِلَىٰ طَعَامِهِ Then let mankind look at his food. Here the question arises, why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us to look at our food. After having spoken about the stages that we went through, 
after the stages that we had we've gone through you will realize why you will realize why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it and the relationship between the two we will come to that soon inshallah ta'ala Allah is saying فَلْيَنْظُرِ insanu, let the disbeliever because the ayah as we said the context is talking to the disbeliever but it's not only restricted to the disbeliever even the believer look at the food Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you when you look at this don't make this look just a mere look this فَلْيَنْظُرِ it means a bit تَفَكُّرِ tadabbur. look at it with pondering analyzing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and what he has bestowed upon you subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ikhwa, I remember one time a person back home in Somalia who was so hungry that they could not sit up. That they were flat on the ground due to excessive hunger. This person couldn't even look up at those who were standing on top of them. If you're told that you, if food is taken away from you and you're told you can't eat, wallahi, you will, roll, you will roll up like a ball. What allows you to stand straight is the nutrition and the food that you eat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you this food. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ Mankind, look at what Allah has given you. Ponder and think and analyze it. إِلَىٰ طَعَامِهِ The food he has given you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And take it as a lesson, as a ibrah. Why does a person need to look at the food he gave you? Because it's this food that you're eating. And it's from this food that you're getting the nutrition from. And it is from this food that you're getting the glucose. And it is from this food that you're getting the carbohydrate. And the protein. And, 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 and it's from this food that you're disobeying Allah. You're using the energy that you get from this food to disobey Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to disbelieve in Him. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? That you take his food that he has given you, that he has provided you with, to strengthen yourself, to gain energy from it, to get protein from it, and carbohydrate, and vitamin. And guess what you do? With that energy that you have absorbed from it, and taken from it, you turn towards your Lord in disobedience, and wrongdoings, and going against his command. That does not go, that does not go right. If a person today bestowed a small benefit onto you, he gave you something, he did you good, he brought you into his own home, مثلاً, and he told you, you can sleep in this room, free of charge. Any food that you want in the fridge, you, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, he gave it to you. If you rob that person's house and you take their belongings, then what would, you, what would that person be? What would that person be in your eyes? What, what would you think of that person to be? Traitor. Huh? Traitor. What else? Mm. You would see him as a dim-witted individual. Is he mentally stable? Are you alright? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى Allah, we don't compare him with anything. He has given you far greater than that. And you take all of that energy. And you take all of his... Uh, food that he has given you subhanahu wa ta'ala and then you go against him by doing what? the disbeliever goes and he does disbelief with it he goes and he does disbelief disbelieving in his Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala